So part of the new position as a chief of staff is now Dr. Schindelwolf does assist in all areas, including the areas of academics, but also works closely with the superintendent and the school board with advocacy, governmental uh, relations, and other areas that may be needed. And so now she is housed here in the superintendent suite. So I'm very fortunate now after several years of working together to be able to see her um, in closer proximity pretty much every day. She is a ray of sunshine. She is always professional and happy and pleasant and really a consummate educator. And so she introduced us to professional learning communities, uh, to true uh, team collaboration. And, um, but before she did all that, she built a lot of trust. So she built that trust with me for our administration team between principal and AP. She built that trust with the teachers, the team leaders, um, all the staff. And so it was a great leadership lesson for me um, that you know, before you implement anything new, you have to have that trust as a leader. So that was really important for me to learn as a, as a leader and how she mentored me through that because she needed me as her assistant principal to be on that same page and you know, rowing in the same direction. As an administrator, I grew more under her leadership in that position than I have as a principal and under any other leader that I've had. Um, she made sure to coach us each and every day. I mean, it was not, you never felt like, you never felt like you were alone. She was always, always in it with you. And then she transitioned into the, the role as chief academic officer. And in that role, man, we've had some, we've had some stumbles in school, right? With, with COVID especially, um, having to completely recreate schools. Um, and she did it with grace, patience, and love each and every day. She is very complimentary of me and others. Every time I see her, she always asks about me and my family, what I'm involved in, how's life, how's it going, and she's like that to everyone. She's a very sweet person. Congratulations, Amy, on your selection of this wonderful honor bestowed upon you tonight at Sam Houston State University. I have been a big cheerleader of yours all the way, as I know the university is as well. Your star is bright and you continue to shine in any position, in any capacity, in education. Amy, congratulations on uh, receiving the Distinguished Educator Award from Sam Houston State University. It's a very well-deserved award and I know the university is proud to have you as this recipient. Congratulations, Dr. Schindelwolf, on being named the Distinguished Educator for 2022. I can't think of anybody else more deserving of that honor. Congratulations, Dr. Schindelwolf, on this award. I think you definitely deserve it, and I'm so happy for you. So I don't remember there ever being a time when I didn't want to be a teacher. Uh, when I was very small, my mom was the principal secretary at our local elementary school, and I spent all of the extra time I had with her there and seeing that, and it was just always what I was going to be. Um, I enjoyed every aspect of school as a student and then being there with her and it was just a natural progression for me to go into that career. I'm most passionate about leadership. I know that in times that we're in right now there's a lot of challenges in education and there always have been. These are just different challenges and I have been motivated by people who have led me over the years and in turn it makes me passionate about leading others. Teachers have the most powerful job in this profession. When students go home at the end of the day and talk to their parents or talk to whoever is supporting them, it's going to most likely be about the teacher. When we think about what makes or breaks a kid's year in school, it's the teacher. And I think that as leaders, we cannot forget to be empathetic towards the classroom. Regardless of how many years you are out of the classroom, you have to be a teacher first. So I um, call myself a hometown girl. Um, my address was Tomball growing up. Um, I actually graduated from a neighboring school and the home I grew up in is 10 minutes away from where I live now. Um, and so I have always lived in this area and I really um, like that. Um, I believe that people who have come to work with me in this district from other places bring diversity, bring a different perspective and strengthen our team. But I also find value in being a member of the team, someone who's grown up here, um, has lived in this community and is able to provide that aspect to the leadership team in Tomball. And I think that um, giving back to the community that gave to me growing up 
is just something that fills my bucket.